from the Raw Boxing TV studios. Your host, Ranger. Information may cause headaches to hates or bias casual fans. Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. The host that gives you facts with very little feelings. From the city of the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, the man who floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. I'm going to show you how great I am. Louisville, Kentucky. It's showtime. Muy, muy buenas noches. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here with us tonight. I have a very special guest here tonight with me. Undefeated prospect, Mariela La Flaca. How are you tonight? Fine. Thanks for the invitation. And let's see how how this how I get done this, you know. But my English sometimes is not that good because I get nervous, but uh, <laughs> hopefully you will help me. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Um, we we got more things to worry about other than your English. Your English is pretty good. I've 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 heard you in other interviews, so don't worry about your English. If you get into any trouble, you can feel comfortable to speak Spanish, and I'll translate back and forward. No worries about that. So, first of all, uh, talk to us. How old are you? And uh, what's your professional record? Even though I already know it, but so the people can have that information. Thing. Well, I'm 32 uh -huh. years old. I just to make to make my pro debut the last year, and uh -huh. um, I'm two and zero. Oh. Yeah, just two fights. Just two fights, fights, and 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 right now you, I, I understand you moved up from the bantamweight division to the uh, super flyweight, right? Yeah, you know the first fight, uh, it was. Uh, at bantam weight, but at the weigh-in, I I did the super fly weight. So awesome! I said, why not down? And uh, because the strength will be the same, you know. So mm -hmm. we made that decision, and it has just been one fight at the super fly. But uh, I think I'm still trying to figure out where I can um, develop better. So you, you're still trying to get a, a better idea of which way is more comfortable for you, right? Whether the Bantam way or yeah. the super fly way. See where you can hit yeah. hit the hardest or feel better uh, condition-wise. Is that what you're trying to figure out? Yeah. What gym, what gym do you fight out of right now as we speak? Sorry? Tu gimnasio, ¿cuál es? ¿Cómo se llama tu gimnasio? What gym? Um, I just made a transition. Today uh -huh. it was my first day at um, El Jefe Boxing. Okay. You know uh, Jose Lawa Rodriguez, which is a fighter from Monterrey who has fought, you know, Felix Verdejo, Mario Barrios, and mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be my head trainer now. Oh, okay. Good, good. You are originally from Sonora, right? Am I correct? Yeah, from the land of Mr. Chavez, Lando City Salido, Hernan Tyson Marquez, you know, huge love for boxing there. And but not, right now I'm living in Monterrey, you know, at the okay. other side of the country. Okay. I came here to study college and uh, I just ended up uh, funding my my um Empresa, my company here. Your company? So, it's a state. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talk yeah, to us about your company. 13 years. I... Awesome. Talk to us about your company so people uh, may know. You you own a, a film company? Is that what it is? About what? what? What is your company about? Is it film? Filming? It's related yeah. to film? Uh, we do. Yeah, it's a film house. We mostly do advertising because, you know, okay. making a film, uh, a movie, it's um, really expensive, but sometimes we get to do it. I'm a producer and I'm a screenwriter. And uh, actually, we uh, I got together with a partner because I wanted to make a documentary about boxing. And awesome. we did it. It's about... Uh, Disco and Chihuahua Rodriguez, you know, okay. he was a uh, unified by a minimum weight champion. So we uh, film all the 
process for becoming a uh, world champion the first time against Merlito Savilo. Okay. And so when we finish the thing, uh, we, you know, one process of the, of the work is filming, but the other Correct. one you have to edit, you have music, edit. blah, blah. So we did that money. So we started the company, which is called Camus Films. Okay. And um, we began doing advertising in order to pay for the movie. And at the end, uh, it uh, it just ended in my my way of um, paying in life. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, I have been doing Correct. that for eight years. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, in Mexico right now, um, there it's been a little harder for you guys to do. Uh, anything when it comes to boxing because of the virus. How has the virus affected you? Have you had to cancel any fights? Do you have any fights coming up? Well, um, I think it it has affected more now than the last year because the um, the cards were already settled. So, um, you know, now that I think about it, I was very lucky because I fought I fought twice in Correct. a COVID year, which you know, but for example, I was a uh, program for January 25, I think, or something, and the car has been canceled because okay. now we are kind in a lockdown. We're not um, strictly at our homes, but all the businesses are closed, you know, cafes, restaurants. Yes. So, um, possible to get something done right now. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Now talk to us a little bit. How did you get into boxing and what age were you? How do you took an interest in the sport of boxing? Um, in my house, there were two rules. One, it was, you got to read every day. You can see <laughs> I, that that rule was really into my subconscious. And yeah. the other one was you had to make, uh, to practice a sport. So I was a swimmer for about two years, hated but you know, you got parents and uh, I didn't even know uh, the amateur boxing existed. I thought you, you had to, you know, get in the ring as a professional the first time you wanted to compete. Um, so after I quit swimming, my dad told me to go to uh, this boxing gym, but you know, just to punch the bag. And, um, Later on in my life, I passed through a very difficult uh, depression time. Mm. And that's when I came back to boxing. And it literally saved my life. So um, first, it was like um, boxing was like my healing instrument. And uh -huh. then I, I began uh, to take it like a, like a sport. And like a sport. Uh, I found out <laughs> there was um an amateur uh, boxing which you know you have, have the headgear and the bigger gloves and uh, my goal was to be a um, champion of the tournaments they do here like the gold gloves and uh, some uh, wbc uh, amateur champions that are held in mexico okay and um my first fight was like i think i was 24, 25, and then, you know, I quit uh, a little bit because, uh, well, no, I put it on pause because I was doing my master's degree. And okay. once I did it, I said, I said, I want to be champion now. So uh, last year, I no, at uh, 2019, I, I won the tournament four times. And that's when I told, mm. uh, when I thought I had to go to the other stage you know oh and, definitely uh, definitely that, that, yeah <laughs> so you had a you, doing, doing professional so. boxing so did you had uh what was your record do you remember how many fights you had as an amateur before turning professional i think i did like 17 fights and i lost okay. three of them okay uh, two of them were like the Golden Gloves uh, final, and I cried so much <laughs> that I told myself I was going to uh, work harder because I, I didn't want to feel uh, that again, you know? Yeah, you didn't like the losing sensation. 
You wanted to be victorious. No. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you work so hard, but, you know, it happens that the other girl um, just turns out to be better. And Correct. Uh, you have to adopt that and uh, work harder. Definitely. Definitely. Now, you make your professional debut. Um, what was that? What was that feeling like? I mean, because there is a there's a pretty decent transition from being an amateur, amateur boxer, all right, and then to becoming a professional, where you have to go in there without headgear, with smaller gloves, gloves that are built more compacted, uh, hand wraps that are that are wrapped uh, to protect your hand, but not so much your face. What was going through your head? Talk to me about that experience as you walk out to the ring. Uh, I was really nervous. You know, the previous weeks, I started to lose my breath. I went to the doctor because I was really worried. And he told me that I was that nervous that my adrenaline levels were too mm. high. So instead of helping me, they were damaging me. So mm. I started like this um, treatment with just natural herbs and, and all that. But I remember thinking, why am I doing this? <laughs> I mean, why do I have this knee go on the ring? And um, but um, a teammate, uh, a boxer, had from my same from the same gym happened to be in the same card, and he helped me. Like you have to breathe and just think you're gonna do great. So I just uh, on the on way to the ring when you are walking, I yeah. just thought I have to act like I am. Uh, Really, so the other girl cannot see that I'm really nervous and that I'm gonna make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, once you can, once you get punched, <laughs> yeah, it's all over. The, the nerves are, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no time to be nervous. And you hit me now, I hit you, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it always is. And that's it, yeah, but. That's that's really interesting what you say. I I for me the the most difficult part of uh, at the at the at the fight is walking and getting into the ring and waiting for the announcer to tell your name. You're like, I want to get going now. <laughs> yeah, you want the fight to start immediately. Like everything seems to be an eternity, <laughs> right? Time just slows down. Yes. And that's and that's actually the <laughs> yeah. toughest part, you know. I, I tell people all the time, as you prepare in the locker room, as you put in your hand wraps, it, it, everything just seems oh. like fifteen minutes seems like two hours, you know. And then yes. everything bothers yeah, you, yeah. you know. People talking, everything bothers you. So I understand. I understand what you're saying. Now, uh, we want to talk a little bit about uh, obviously female boxing here in America. Obviously, we've been having a, a lot of debates. Uh, when it comes to female boxing, uh, their pay, uh, the duration of the rounds, the duration of the fights, what are some of the things that can be done to help female boxing uh, excel, uh, make make them make more money? In Mexico, I understand, uh, I heard in one of your interviews, you made like $50 around or 50 pesos around. Which one was it? Or a hundred pesos? $50. <laughs> yes. $50 around. Yeah. Well, you know, don't be surprised here. Here, there's people that fight for a hundred dollars a round. So it's it's uh, I guess it all depends on promotions or, or whatever the case might be. But for example, uh, as a professional, you have not experienced any knockouts. However, as an amateur, while I was doing research on you, you did have some knockouts as an amateur, right? Yeah, my I think that my um there were like four or five, just four or five knockouts. Oh, correct. As a professional, as of now, you have not had the opportunity to experience it. Now, a lot of a lot of us uh, uh, people here in the YouTube boxing community, we seem to think that it could be several factors. One of them, the most important, might be uh, just two minute rounds. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, uh, uh, are three minute rounds? You think three minute rounds extending the period per round might help? the opportunities of maybe getting a knockout? And if so, uh, what are some of the things or what's being done to to make the switch that you know of or what can be done? Well, you know, 
I only have two fights, um, mm -hmm. but I have heard that lots of uh, professional boxers with more career, like Clarissa Shields or um, Christina Hammer, for example, mm -hmm. they tell that maybe a three minutes round can um, can give more attention uh, to female boxing because of the knock knockouts that can be uh, that can take place. But I think that the knockouts have to, um, you know, they have to, tienen que ver, how do you say, they, tienen que ver con la anatomía. They have to be with the, the, the anatomy of um, females and males, you know. Males okay. have a lot of uh, bands and several more muscles in the Definitely. arms. And maybe that's why they can punch harder in order that, to uh, knock out the opponent. That's pretty interesting. Uh, that's pretty interesting that you said that that he has something to do with male and female's anatomy because that's also a, a, a point that has been discussed here in the past. But however, it's not very popular because people just uh, we want more money and we want it now. But there are several factors, right, that that go into play when it comes to female uh, boxing. One of the main issues here in America that I've seen is uh, that it does not happen in Mexico, and for that I have to you know, put my hands together. It's when you look at a female boxer in Mexico and you look at the arena, the arena is full. Here in America, yes, unfortunately, it's not. And uh, professional boxing is a business, of course. You know, uh, promoters want to invest money, but also make money back. Uh, why is it that in Mexico, uh, women boxing has the support that he has, but the purse has not changed. Is that something that has ever been asked? Uh, have you ever heard of anybody talking about that? Because when you look around, you know, the stadiums are full. Yeah, that's right. I haven't been asked that, but uh, as uh, like you, I've seen the arenas, and that's right. I just uh, remember a fight that took place here between uh, Mungia and... Um, I, the Irish guy, I can remember the name. The, the light skinned guy that had the big cut. Yeah. Yeah. No, the uh, uh, one that was here in Monterey, that, the one that I think he lost, but on the cards he won. Um, yeah. I can't remember the name. Well, I don't remember his name either. Event was, yeah. The main event was Areli Musinho. And okay. I heard the whole crowd, you know, chanting at, at her in. She gave like a really great fight with with a Venezuelan girl that came to fight, and you know I think when Mexican women uh, fight, they fight like with a Mexican style that we like. Yeah. And uh, the crowds just love to to see that, you know. Correct. And, and that's the first time that that I saw any in a, a state, and I was. Like, oh my god, people really, really enjoy seeing her fight and they pay the ticket and I don't know why it doesn't happen in another place, maybe because of the style and, and you know, like the, um, I think most women have a more amateur style than a professional style, like okay. going to the party and trying and trying to knock out the, the opponent, maybe that's why. But here in Mexico, you know, we have great warriors. We have a huge number of uh, female champions. And uh, I think that's why um, I just see in my team that every day more women go go there. Awesome. To practice boxing. Awesome. And not to mention that it also serves as, you know, like you said, uh, when you go through depression, it can help you deal through those dark times in your life. Uh, I've been, I've gone through depression myself, so I know what you're talking about. It can also help a woman learn how to defend herself, right? Uh, so boxing is just more than just a sport. You can almost translate it as a way to life, as a lifestyle. So I understand what you're saying. Definitely here in America, if you notice, the highest paid boxer right now is Clarissa Shields. Uh, um, and when you look at Clarissa Shields, she has uh, over, over 10 professional fights, I believe, but only has two knockouts, and the two knockouts have been stoppages. We've never actually experienced her um, have an actual uh, an actual knockout, and she's a pretty big and strong girl. So I that I definitely can see what you're saying when it comes to the anatomy of female and male being able to 
uh, punch harder than um, than a female. But definitely one of the big uh, issues is 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 uh, it could be the two round minutes, uh, and also um, you know it'd be interesting to see a, a female boxing going three rounds and twelve rounds. I mean three minute rounds at twelve rounds on championship. Maybe maybe we'll start producing um, better better purses. Uh, a little more knockouts, more interest. Here in America, I can tell you it's not like in Mexico. Unfortunately, here in America, um, women are not supporting women's sports uh, as much as they should. Uh, and so I, that, that's definitely the difference between Mexico and uh, the United States when it comes to uh, female boxing. When, when you look at your career, mm -hmm. even though that is a young career, who do you aspire to be? as and it could be a male or a female it doesn't necessarily have to be a female boxer but if it is it is oh that's like a really hard question for me because i uh, i don't think the talent to be as as good as the people i admire um but you know my the biggest uh stars for me in boxing is um uh, ana maria torres La okay. Guerrera. Because Tough you know one. she was one of, of the first uh, female boxers that had big, big, uh, big events, and uh, I don't know. I just see her and I see someone that really struggled but uh, did like a, a a huge a huge impact in the um, Mexican society. And I'm gonna tell you why because it seems that I'm I'm, I'm telling like. <laughs> Uh, something really epic and big, but it is because uh, Mexican society is, uh, you know, is machista. How do you say it? Like uh, yeah, macho man. Yeah, the, they understand. The word is understood in English. Macho man, yeah. machista. Yeah. But then you see a, a woman like Ana Maria to go on the ring, do her thing, and then uh, outside the ring, she's a mom. She trains her sister. It's like. I mean, what else do we aspire to be, you know? Correct. And uh, at the time, I admire Jackie Nava, which uh, he's an, she's an architect, a mom, a boxer. She's still spike. Wow. And uh, now she's a politician. <laughs> I mean, oh, a politician. Interesting. Interesting yeah. uh, switch uh, uh, of events. Speaking of machismo, have you ever received any uh, negative feedback for being a, a woman in, in the gym? Um, maybe your college know. friends, but your I business to, partners. I want to know, but it, it just happened and it has to be what I'm changing uh, my team because um, we do uh, we do not earn as much as uh, males. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe the attention given from the people uh, is not the same from trainers and, and you know, and um yeah, that's when I, I, well, I got shocked that, okay, they're really not going to be um, training me as good as him because he's a, Correct. Uh, oh, and he can win more and he can, but I mean, it, it's okay. I'm, there's always a way and uh, I'm going to figure it out. Correct. Oh, of course. I mean, all you got to do is go to the gym and put the work yourself and, and try to work as hard as the next guy. So I understand what you're saying. Because of the men makes a little more money, they put more of an effort on him than they do on you. Yeah. That's exactly yes. what you're saying. Yeah, and it's understandable. Unfortunately, it shouldn't be like that. But uh, it does happen in, 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 in the sport of boxing. It's a sport that we all love, but we have to admit it's a bit corrupted from time to time, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, even though that we that we absolutely love have, the sport. Yeah, what also happens is that sometimes, um, uh, well, my for example, my some of my partners, my sparring partners, suddenly they are pregnant or uh, they got married and they quit the sport. Mm -hmm. And I think that because it has happened often to the trainers, they just don't believe uh, we can commit. No, correct. I mean, I'm about the, the small games I have been in, right? I don't know uh, if it's like a generalized um, Yeah, you're feeling. speaking from a personal experience. Yeah, right. 
Awesome, awesome. Now let me tell you something. Speaking about sparring partner, I did saw a video of you sparring a man. You did pretty good. Oh no, that's what's horrible being on Twitter. Um yeah. Uh it's hard to find sparring partners. Um, not only because of the of the weight, but because uh here in the city the, the distances are really big and uh I just can train at a certain hour because then I have to go to the office and, you know, so um, sometimes I just have to use what I have in the gym and uh, the guys are willing to help. Uh, Correct. Sometimes it's just a bit too much. My nose was broken once in sparring and uh, with a man, but uh, it really helps because once you are in the, in the ring, with the girl you're supposed to fight, uh, the punches don't hurt. They don't hurt as bad. I think I saw a picture uh, of your hurt of your <laughs> nose when it was uh, messed up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you definitely <laughs> correct, correct. But like, hey, all credit to you for um, for doing that. You look pretty good against the guy. I mean, you you landed you landed pretty one two combinations and your feints and your mid mid range and it was pretty decent i mean you're 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 only Thank 2 and 0 but you know the more you work i can <laughs> say, i can tell that you probably uh keep advancing in your skills because the one thing i've noticed is you have passions for the sport uh i've seen it in the other interviews and and uh if you just keep working i believe i believe you can uh you can improve on your uh, on your skills on your defense on your offense and and all of that good stuff so uh, to keep it moving here, um, what uh, have you heard? Any, have you heard anything as far as like when will you have another fight because of these new uh, lockdowns? And if so, when when La Flaca fights, what's a what's a what's a way that we can see it here in America? Because I was looking on YouTube and a, a lot. Of, it's not tele, it's not put on YouTube. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen any or is it just strictly Mexico right now airing your fights? No, um, the fights are being um, on transmitted on Facebook Live at the okay. Warrior. That's the page, and that's my uh, promotion. Um, that's my promote. Th those are my promoters, and um, the last fight, you know, it's it's really funny. I was um, the swing bout in the ESPN card. Awesome, but. They had the lights went went out on the <laughs> venue, oh, and yeah. uh, they didn't want to risk it, so they put me, and I I uh, ended up uh, fighting off the the car the TV card. But yeah. uh, you can watch on uh, yeah Warriors Boxing. That's the Facebook Warriors page. Boxing. Yeah, and I'm supposed to fight and um, at the last days of February. Last day of February. Do you know an Do you know your opponent yet, or do you? Uh, what's her record like? No, because they are always like uh, trying to find me someone um, locally here in Monterey. Because obviously uh, they want to keep like the cards uh, not that expensive. Correct. But the fights that I have had, um, they got to uh, fly the girl here because they didn't find me opponents. So um, let's see. Oh, it is awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And so you already started your training camp for that day. You're already in preparation for for that day. Yeah, and I that... didn't stop you know, between the, the other fight and Christmas. Um, I kept running and doing my weight training. And today I started like the camp and uh, we are now working on moving my head because I'm not uh, head movement and upper body movement. Not... Excellent. It's not that good because I always rely on my power and, you know, because I'm too tall and um, I just like to stand there and uh, and I think because of the range of the other, it won't get me. I just, yeah. I don't, I just don't move, but yeah, um, <laughs> so yeah. I'm on, on, on that. Yeah. And so now they're working on you when it comes to uh, implementing your upper body movement and using your legs in the ring uh, just to have more skills in the in the in the bag right basically 
Precisely. I was watching a fight of uh, uh, I was watching a Katie Taylor fight today. And uh, and and even Katie Taylor has her moments where she doesn't move her head and she likes to stand there and just boom, boom, trade back and forward. And and I've always wondered that I'm like, well, you know, it'd be nice for uh, for them to uh, a lot of these female uh, boxers that are so good, but but they lack the. The, the upper body movement. So it's good that you in such a young career at two and O is good that you're already starting to work on that. And so we'll just, let's, let's hope everything, uh, everything works out now at your age and being uh, uh, a bit real, how long do you think you have uh, to box? Are you just going to box as long as your body tells you flaca, you're good. Or are you going to box even if your body tells you you're not good? Because that's usually what happens. We Boxers usually yeah. don't retire when they need to. Yeah, we have seen that several times. <laughs> um, I'm, I think to fight until my body uh, is able to. But I'm going to keep boxing, you know, going at the gym. And that's going to be like a, like a lifestyle, which I, I don't know. It... it, it, it uh, it will be needed, like, I don't know, an, uh, a really bad injury to keep me away from a boxing gym. Because that's what uh, makes me happy, gives me uh, awesome. you know, the, like my strength. And, but I get what you say when, well, sometimes it's just enough of uh, receiving punishment. And, but right now, I feel really good and I think I can improve. Uh, awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. For so basically your passion for the sport, your love for the sport, your understanding of the sport, your need for the sport is going to keep you in a boxing gym even past your retirement. Even after your yeah. retirement, you're still going to go to the gym every day instead of, say, going to your, your normal gyms to <laughs> lift weights. Your, your, your workouts is going to be pretty much... Uh, Basically, the boxing gym. Yeah, and and you know, I have to dream of being a, a, a manager. You know, to have maybe two or three boxers and uh, the better careers. And um, I'm gonna be always attached to the sport. You know. Uh, awesome, awesome. And hopefully, your 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 filming company goes a bit far. You did an Infinity commercial, didn't you? Infinity vehicles. Oh yeah, but you know that's that was uh, really funny because we were filming it, and the model didn't show up. But you know, you have the you have the cars, you have. So it was like, what do we do? And you know, mm -hmm. I just I had to to be there, so I happened to uh to be. You threw a dress place. on, some makeup, and and then did it embarrassing but yes you know you have to do what you have to do when it comes you gotta to do what you gotta do when it comes to life so and and it was um at the end it was uh cool because they lent me uh one of the cars like for uh 20 days awesome and, um, you know they should the have given you the car beautiful oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> they didn't want it <laughs> Well, listen, uh, one of the reasons that I, that, that I wanted to have you in this show today was not only to get to know who you are as a professional, where you're going in your career, but it's also because of your knowledge of boxing. I was telling some of the guys that had interviewed you before, I need to have her in my channel because she has an extended knowledge when it comes to, uh, to boxing. And so because you have that extended knowledge into boxing, I wanted to talk to you about two uh two professional boxers uh one of them being what's a good way to put this so one of them can easily be considered the face of boxing however however uh he's not fully accepted by his own people just yet obviously the name is canelo alvarez right now it's not the first time it happens uh we've seen it with other fighters uh Oscar de la Hoya, although he never, he wasn't born in Mexico, he was deeply rooted in his Mexican uh, root. He was also not fully uh, accepted. Is there a reason for that? Or what are your personal thoughts? Or what have you heard on the gyms? Uh, why is Canelo not accepted? 
I, we all, we, uh, every time we talk about Canelo, you know, it's going to be um, a lot of different opinions. Um, it's I a heated think, debate, yeah. Yeah, it's a heated uh, land. Uh, um, how can I say this? I think that, like, the, the, the most, the, the most um, simple way to uh, put it is that, Canelo seems like a uh, spoiled child <laughs> okay. that he fights whoever he wants and he wants it and under his conditions. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And the other one is, is that um, because of that condition and because he's a really good boxer, because he is a really good boxer. Yes. Um, it may, it, it uh, you look at it, you look, uh, you look him in the gym, in the ring and, um, it seems that it's really easy for him to win the fights. You know, we saw that with Callum Smith and everyone was like, my phone was burning, like everyone like telling me that Callum Smith saw himself and blah, blah, blah. And you know, you have to like look what it's um, underneath the fight that uh, he didn't have a full training camp. The weight was an issue because Callum Smith is not a natural 168 and blah, blah. And uh, I think that's why the opinions are like uh, really, um, you know, really different. Uh, yeah, really different. Yes. Yeah. Um, I I do like him as a boxer, and he's really disciplined. But I think that also he doesn't connect with people. He not mm. he's not like the people camp. He's not like Julio Cesar Chavez or El Terrible El Terrible Morales. Like, ¿qué onda, oh, Terrible man? Morales. Wow. Yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> today I was actually today I was actually watching highlights of all of the fights that he had with Marc Antonio Barreras, and oh my gosh, what a fight! You yeah, know, all I of the know. fights with Ter Terrible Morales and Barreras was hell of a fight. Terrible Morales and Pacquiao, you know, it was crazy. Oh my god, yeah. If those fights Even were the like. Way uh, the weigh-ins between Pacquiao and Barre between Barrera and Morales, there were fights, you know. Fights. So I mean, you could tell that when you when you look at those weigh-ins and those guys go at it right then and there, you could tell that okay, I need to watch this fight. I cannot mix, miss this fight. And then when they fought, yeah. they never disappointed. But I can kind of see what you're saying with Canelo not connecting with the Mexican uh, uh, audience, mainly because of his personality. He seems to be like a narrow person, more uh, more serious, not not uh, too friendly with everybody, or at least shy, maybe. Um, who knows? Um, but I can, I can kind of understand the reasons why some people may not uh, uh, accept him in, the, in that manner. The other boxer I wanted to talk... Oh, well, before we leave Canelo, with the new... With the new uh, regulations happening in Mexico due to COVID. He is set to fight, I believe, at La Chiva Rayada del Guadalajara Stadium with uh, Yildrum. Do you think yeah. that that's going to be allowed, being that now there's uh, new regulations? Um, well, we're mostly on the, um, with the vaccine right now, you know, uh, maybe mm -hmm. he's, he's meant to fight on May, right? February. February, uh, end of February. I I don't think it, it can happen because it's two months away and uh, our cases are going up and uh, the hospitals are crowded. Um, mm. I don't think it happened. And I actually was like a little bit, um, how do you say, come on, not that convinced that the, the fight was going to be held in Mexico because I don't think there's enough money uh, to invest in yeah, that. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Now, even though that because of the virus, a lot of the fighters are conscious that there is no money being made at the gate, they're taking, uh, you know, pay, big pay cuts. Um, so I understand I understand that part. But I always had that doubt. I was like, how, how is he going to fight in Mexico uh, when Mexico is literally shutting down? Yeah, you know? and if you want to have your fight in a big stadium, it doesn't make sense if you're you cannot have people there. You know? Correct. So the gate won't be like a 
um, it's not a good investment to make in the fight. So I, I don't think he's going to be fighting here. Correct. Because uh, as of now here in the United States, uh, the state of Texas, the state of Florida, uh, and I believe Vegas is going to be allowing people uh, in the crowds. And as of now, the most they've allowed is 16,000 people in uh, in Texas. And so, you know, I can only imagine in Mexico right now, um, when you look at the soccer games, soccer games, the, the stadiums are, are, are empty because of that. So I couldn't imagine Canelo fighting in front of a um, of a crowd in Mexico, even though Canelo owes a fight to the Mexican people because the last time he fought in Mexico was in 2011, I believe it was, wasn't it? 2011 or so? It might have been. It will be really um, huge to have him fight here because, you know, all his um, elite career has been held in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Come on, don't give us Jill Dream Canelo. <laughs> a better fight, at least. Yeah, yeah. I'm well, the the Jill Dream fight, I believe, I believe what I've heard from uh, from from the sources is that the Jill Dream fight was first uh, postponed uh, so that the Colin Smith fight can happen, and Jill Dream stepped aside with the condition that after the Colin Smith, they had to negotiate their fight within ninety. Uh, within 90 days. So I believe that that's why that fight is taking place. We never know for certain. We can only go by what is being told to us. But yes, I agree with you. Yildrum is not an opponent for Canelo. Uh, he probably unified the division by fighting uh, um, uh, Billy Joe Sounders, if Billy Joe Sounders remains unbeaten against uh, uh, Demetrius Andrade, uh, because he's going to fight Demetrius Andrade for what we're hearing now. Now, the other boxer is not born in Mexico, doesn't speak Spanish, has mm -hmm. 7 million young girls following him on Instagram, Ryan, uh, Ryan Garcia. What are your thoughts on the boy? Um, I think he's a boy. <laughs> he's 22 <laughs> years old. And what he has done uh, in the sport is... Um, it's really good, you know. Yeah. We wanted to to, uh, to see him with a real fighter, you know, not the Fonseca fight or the or, or you know, like uh, we wanted to get rounds in. And what he did um, against Con it was a really Luke, good fight. you know, you could tell that he was flat-footed and it, that he movement wasn't the one we see on the. Uh, Instagram videos where he's walking the cobra ball and all that, but uh, he's 22 years old. You know, imagine what he's the still learning, kids can, yeah. can learn. And um, it's not like my favorite style to watch, or but, but um, not in that Instagram thing because I don't know. I just want to see like the boxers as boxers, not with the other thing but that's my personal opinion and one thing that it's um that is true it's that he's um he's giving more eyes uh more eyeballs to the sport for people yeah. who isn't you know like you and me like like to talk about the styles and like to talk about uh maybe fantasy <clears throat> matchups and who's the pound for pound king and whatever uh Correct. sometimes people gonna be entertained and he delivers you know? Yeah, he's delivering and, that, of course. Yes. He's delivering so that. So I think yeah. that he also, he's going to improve. And okay. uh, all the mistakes that he made there may not be on the next fight. because On the next fight. Work on Especially the but chin the, being left in the air, right? Yeah, but the division, uh, you know, that division, it's, um, <sighs> it has a lot it's of loaded. prospects. And the, yeah. That maybe, for example, I don't, I do not think he's ready for Teofimo Lopez, for example. Oh, absolutely not. I agree with you. I, 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 I don't think that he's. I, I ran a poll in my channel a few uh, days ago. Let me uh, make this so people can see it a little better. Uh, I ran a poll in my channel because obviously I, wa I wanted to ask the people who should be his next opponent. And if you notice here, the names that I put was Linares, Fortuna, Nakatani, Devin Haney or Tank Davis. 41% thought that Linares uh, should be his next fight. 
Uh, Tank Davis, 23. David Haney, 31. And Fortuna and Nakatani even um, at three. Now, what it looks like now is that the fight with Tank David is the one that's actually going to take place first. Today, was a, there was a big interview. I don't know if you heard in Mexico uh, where, where uh, Ryan Garcia went to the Mike Tyson show. And during the middle of the show, Tank Davis calls and interrupts the show and, and goes at it with, uh, with uh, Garcia. For what it looks like, that's the fight that's going to take place first. What's interesting about this whole division now, I don't know if you've seen Ring, Ring Magazine's uh, Top 10, yeah. which is a disaster. But if you look at here, Tank Davis is not even in the Top 10, according to the Ring Magazine. And I believe that's a bit, uh, a bit unfair because Tank Davis is also another powerful fighter. Uh, Tank Davis is also another... Um, popular fighter and he has fought at the 135 he knocked yeah. out uh, uh leo santa cruz what do you think about that top 10 let me play it for you again because it seems to be uh, and then ryan garcia as number two yeah, that's I a think bit that, uh sometimes sometimes the editors that uh like more the more um technique style than the mm -hmm. uh the one that is efficient um, but yeah, I do disagree with the list because, for example, Leo Santa Cruz is a really good uh, boxer and he mm -hmm. boxed uh, Tank Davis like for three or two rounds. You know, I had yeah. the, the fight then yeah. until the knockout and um, I happened to be there at the fight. I, I flew from here because, yeah, I wanted to be there. And, uh, you know, I, I saw that Leo was like... Um, Edging from a little bit like the rounds, but yeah. you could smell the danger and what happened there, you know, I scared with that uh, knocked out and then the, the dad that was here uh, with, uh, I mean, it, it was, was bad. Just like, it was um, a Manny Pacquiao Marcus moment, you know, you just correct, fight. correct, yeah. especially because nobody had ever seen Leo being knocked out. And then the way he got knocked out, where he, he got completely put to sleep, it was kind of like, oh, wow, what just happened here? So I understand what you're saying uh, uh, when it comes to that. So your thoughts on this fight, Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis. Obviously, Tank Davis, um, some people say he has a Mexican style. He likes to stand there, get hit, and hit you back. Ryan Garcia, not so much, but... Um, more of the styles, more, more more of the stylist, but his chin is up in the air. How do you see that fight taking place? I mean, uh, well, or happening? Yeah, my my impression is that if um, Campbell could score a knockdown to Ryan Garcia, it was I think a combination. It was like a feint to the uh, to the to body, body, and then he went upstairs. Plus, yeah, I think um, with. Jervonta Davis, uh, if he doesn't move and boxes, he he can be knocked out. Yeah. I mean, because the Tank Davis has the power, he has the rounds, he has experience. And, um, but I don't know, sometimes Tank, Tank Davis looks bad, you know, when he gets back in the ring and it has all that extra ring stuff uh, happening around him. Um, but I do not think it's a 50-55, maybe 60-40. And um, I will go for Tank Davis. Tank Davis, pretty interesting, yeah. yeah. Some people here are going for Tank Davis. Me, my only concern is the chin. Uh, if it wasn't because he lifts his chin up in the air all the time, I would feel comfortable going, uh, you know, for Orion Garcia. But we have to wait and see... Um, uh, what happens on the meantime, that division is so, so packed with, uh, with talent, you know, like Alinares, uh, Fortuna's a very good fighter, Nakatani, the way he did Verdejo, you know, people, pe what people he used did with, with Verdejo, yeah. yeah. What he did, I was like, this fight is over, you know, on round, round three, four, because he was just, uh, surviving there and then oh my god japanese style warrior there it was um amazing i felt bad 
for Vertejo because I know it's like, um, like I think like his second attempt to return to the elite, mm -hmm. you know, Correct. it was like Este Verdejo, everyone was talking about him, the new prospect of Puerto Rico, Tito Trinidad, blah, blah, blah. But Nakatani, yeah. I think it's he, definitely hard to, it, to fill Trinidad's shoes, you know, Trinidad left a legacy that's uh, that's pretty hard for uh, any of the, the current Puerto Rican champions. Uh, he's going to well you know uh, i kind of want to see the second round first yeah i kind of people keep saying you know so far nobody's nobody's been able to go past the first round with berlanga i, I keep saying a good fight for berlanga would be julio cesar chavez jr i think chavez takes him takes him past the first him. round you cannot knock him out you know canelo couldn't do it and but you know julio uh, I don't know. Sometimes he's trained. Sometimes he's not. Uh, sometimes he's on TikTok, like uh, dancing there and doing. Uh, I don't <laughs> think that. I don't think he's like uh, taking serious his career. Uh, but sometimes I understand him. You know, your dad is Julio Cesar Chavez. What are you doing boxing? You know. <laughs> yeah. Do you think that? Do you think that he only got into boxing to have a relationship with his dad to try to impress his dad? Uh, because Chavez wasn't there with him growing up as he would have liked it to be because of obviously the all of the struggles of life, the alcohol use and all of that stuff. You think he's just um, doing it to to make his father happy? No, I think that um, in Mexico we say infancia's destino, like childhood is destiny. So Correct. what you see at your house and what your parents do, maybe like subconsciously you're going yeah. to uh, repeat and maybe i mean he was born on a boxing scene correct so, uh, that's all he knows for example right and maybe that's why maybe he fell in love with the sport because he used to be a really good fighter um i like more omar actually because i think he had more power and more, more mobility but uh well what happened with omar is that you know in cancun uh he had a fight where um, his opponent died. And mm. from now on, he wasn't like uh, the same Omar. Uh, because, you know, you you don't, you don't didn't kill the man, but you... But um, he died because of your fight. Yeah, I understand. So th no wonder we haven't seen him, or I hadn't seen him, and that's because of the death of his opponent. That's why, is that why he's been sort of like... That was like a... 2012 something that he he made like a uh, few fights then uh he fought the uh, brother of canelo right uh, yeah Roberto. yeah but he um, hasn't been the same he hasn't been fighting so often or nothing anymore after that and, yeah. and you know the it's um uh, when you um when they live in a very uh dangerous and strange city in mexico Mexico, where all the cartels um, mm. and drugs are like available. So, <laughs> correct. Maybe, you know, I have friends there and they say there are gossips, but they say that they are like not in, not at, at the gym precisely. Yeah. I've been wanting to go to Mexico because my wife is from Mexico, from Veracruz. But that's one of the oh, things that's kept me from, from kind of like, oh, you know, should I go? Do I really want to go? Should I wait and yeah. see if things get a little better? But well, you never know. Um, certain cities where um, I wouldn't um, recommend you to go, but other ones, you know, there's not like this. Um, there are not like drug lords everywhere. You know. Correct. Correct. Uh, you have to know where to go. And awesome. It. Awesome. Well, listen. It's it's been a it's been a pretty interesting hour. I've I've had uh, fun talking boxing with you uh, getting to know your career a little better. Tell the people before we go, what are your social media out outlets? Where can they go find you? Because, you know, professional boxing, it's also a popularity yeah. sport. So the more people that know you, the better, right? Well, I'm uh, like Mariela Espinosa on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's how can you uh, find me. And... Um, yeah, thank you for inviting me. I was just like, um, I know you're human, right? Yes, you have like human yes, 
Yeah, well, yeah, I was so born in Cuba. Oh, where? Uh, Guantanamo. 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 Yeah. I was Guantanamo. also I was also a boxer too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was like looking at the interview with uh, David Morrell Jr. That's what. Yes. That was good interview and you know david morrell yesterday i saw the fight uh between um lennox Allen. yeah it was a really good fight but then yeah. the other fight robonsky i mean how he destroyed <laughs> the oh god and let's not talk about frank sanchez also which is another cuban prospect that yes with uh at the undercard of uh smith and canelo but i was like he he went with Eddie Hearn, you know, to to yeah. uh, tell him to put him uh, more um, level of a yeah, more aggressive, more of a, a professional level yeah. style. Then found he was like um, working how he yeah how he's supposed to. That's that's right. But definitely, I mean, yeah, definitely, so David Morel Jr. is 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 gonna be. Uh, uh, a very interesting fighter because what people don't realize, and I didn't know this until after the interview, uh, I get a call from his promoter and, uh, and one of his, not his promoter, he's uh, one of his managers. And uh, they tell me what happened before that fight. And people don't realize that um, three hours before that fight, he had, he had passed out uh, because of trying to make weight. He passed out. They had to, uh, put um, alcohol on him, wake him up. That's why that's why he went into the ring with a little uh, knot here. And he comes out and he destroys the guy. And then with Lennox, uh, that was a training camp with zero sparring because of the COVID. He had zero sparring. So I'm thinking this guy, if he stays disciplined and dedicated to the sport, I think he's going to do cause a lot of damage in the 168 division. Uh, and that's another division that is extremely, yes. extremely yes. packed and, with know, talent. What, what's great about Morel, like he likes to um, the 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 short distance uh, fight. So yeah. he goes for the punches, and for example, Rigondo, you know, all the people that that don't like his style because the movements, whatever. But David Morel has like a little bit of Mexican style, like going forward. Yeah, and he goes for it. The opponent. Yeah. And that reminds me of the, um, um, the fight between uh, Castillo and uh, Casamayor. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, that right, right now in Mexico, there's two, two big talents that are about to make their their move to the United States. One, one is a, is a heavyweight call, uh, Giovanni Busson. Uh, right now he's coming up Mexico. I can't really say much, but he's coming across Mexico to get into the United States. And, uh, the other one has actually fought in Mexico. His name is Joelvis Gomez. These are two extremely good, uh, and powerful fighters that will be making their, their American debut pretty soon. As soon as they come through, uh, through that border. Uh, but, uh, um, Morel was also in Mexico for a year and a half uh, before coming to the United States. So, uh, yeah, I mean, let's hope that these guys remain um, remain uh, undefeated. This style right there, who you know, who you've been with, is sending you, yeah. uh, saying hi to you guys. Uh, I was now thinking about, you know, I think that the grandson of Mantequilla Napoles is now oh. fighting in Mexico. Oh, is he? Yeah. See, you. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's yes, that's I that's think. knowledge right there. He fought like the the last month. I'm gonna send you the link. And, awesome. Uh, Do that. No, Miguelapolis. We feel that he's Mexican, you know, but uh, legendary. Born, yeah, legendary. Uh, one of the greatest um, legends of our sport. Yeah, Mantequilla Napoles was definitely, definitely. A legend. Well, listen, Mariela, uh, uh, don't be a stranger to the channel. Next time you have a fight, let me know. We we'll bring you in here. Uh, anytime you want to join the panel, all you got to do is let us know. I'll send you the link. You obviously have a lot of insight when it comes to boxing. And in this channel, that's what we want. We want ho co-hosts that, 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 that are willing to speak boxing and not so much emotionalism and, 
and gossips and not, nothing like that. We want pure hardcore boxing fans, and uh, you're one of those. Uh, I want to wish you very a lot of good luck in your career, especially in your fight coming up. Uh, and uh, hopefully this COVID stuff gets a bit under control so we can start enjoying the sport uh, to the full extent uh, that, that that it needs to be enjoyed at. Uh, so uh, once again, people can find you. Uh, I will leave the link to your Twitter in the description of this video once uh, everything is done. I will also, if you, don't, if you want me to, I can leave the link to your uh, production company, your video filming company. Uh, well, people can go there and check out your work. And if anybody is interested, contact them and uh, and lock down some business with her. Uh, I want to thank everybody that showed up tonight. Uh, obviously, there's a lot going on in the sport of boxing when it comes to YouTube tonight. Everybody's busy. But to those that did show up, I want to thank you. Uh, Mariela, once again, thank you so much. Until next time, we're out. <laughs>